Hello and welcome to uh, my first video on Warhammer 40k Kill Team for or specifically it's Kill Team 2021 the newest version of Kill Team and this video is not about how to play Kill Team or whatever but I will I wanted to make like a an overview video of each factions and we are starting with Space Marines I'm really sorry if I stutter or whatever because well because it is what it is I guess I'll try to edit them out all right let's just start now for starters we're we're starting with Space Marines, right? Because everyone have Space Marines, even though I personally don't really like them. All right, uh, because Space Marines have a lot of kill team choices, we will start from just the Primaris ones. Oh boy, people's favorites. <laughs> so for a Primaris, let's see. We'll check from the lists that you can bring. First one is the Intercessor Fire Team. With Intercessors, you get five intercessors, right? So it's uh, one sergeant and four intercessor warriors. These are all right. You get five people. They're not that tough. You would think space marines would be tough, right? But they're not really that tough. We'll see why later. Let's look at the second one. This, personally, I think this uh, assault intercessors are probably the weakest fire team in the game yeah i don't really like them and we'll see why later when we see their data sheets but yeah their um, weapon options are like hand flamers heavy bolt pistol plasma pistol for the leader chain sword power fist power weapon thunder hammer that's that's okay and then there's four assault intercessor warriors the next ones are incursor and infiltrators and reavers this is pretty much the same like one leader four of the warriors one leader four warriors one leader for warriors and then we have these heavy intercessors people might say oh these are the worst one because of their data sheets but no i don't think this is the worst one actually right uh, heavy intercessors only have like four members one leader and three heavy intercessors one of them can be a heavy gunner so let's look at the data sheets but before you can see here their arch type most of them are seek and destroy and security which is fine seek and destroy should be pretty easy to do with marines uh, and security is all right infiltration for incursors infiltrators and reavers that's also fine but personally i wouldn't use infiltration for these three because you only have like five members and if you're playing too aggressive with five members that could be fatal all right we'll skip ploys and equipments for now we'll look at that later we are looking at the data slate first one is the intercessor intercessors are fine they have six inch movements two inch times three apl3 j1 that's standard df uh, defense of three that's standard save of three plus that's also good wound 13 that looks good right this is all right for this game you can just see all of these stats as the baseline stats right you get you only get five of them which is not a lot yeah these are like the standard stats three plus is good 13 wounds is pretty good that's a lot because most of the other factions only have like seven eight wounds ten if you're lucky let's look at the weapon choices for intercessor you get the auto bolt rifle you throw four dices looking for three plus damage of three and four on crit and then you get ceaseless uh ceaseless means you can reroll any result of one only one dice though all right so bolt rifle this one have pierce one uh same same damage profile accuracy but you have a chance to do piercing which is if you have a crit your attack will be ap1 that's pretty good and the last one is same damage profile ap1 you don't have to crit to gain ap1 but it's heavy so you can only dash remember that you can still dash because read this heavy means you cannot charge fall back or normal move but you can still dash at least that's how i read the rules and i don't think they have mentioned about dashing means you can't shoot heavy in the faq in the latest one so i think this is correct right you can still dash and shoot all right melee isn't really that strong but it's still an okay choice it's still pretty much the same as their range attacks four dice three plus three damage four on crit standard baseline stats next one is the leader you get more options here however i think this is like mostly a trick 
people see, oh yeah, there's a hand flamer. No, you don't bring flamers unless you're fighting like horde armies. But even then, if the player who plays horde armies clump their models together, they're going to lose anyway. That's a dumb thing to do. And then there's plasma pistol, right? This looks great until you realize it's only range 6, but it depends on how you play, I suppose. But overall, I would still pick Bolt Rifle compared to the others. Or if, you, if you're not feeling lucky, you can pick Ceaseless. But then again, this is only rerolling one. I don't really usually like this. Might as well just get Bolt Rifle. This is good. Uh, it's 2 plus because it's the leader. 3, 4 damage, pierce 1. Pretty good. Plasma Pistol, it's good if you want to play more aggressive with the leader. But I don't think that's a very good idea. Stalker Bolt Rifle is the same, but now you got 2 plus accuracy. For the melee, Chainsword, there is never a situation where you want to bring Chainsword unless you're playing what you see is what you get. Like you only have a model with Chainsword and people in your game store won't let you play it as if you're using another weapon. Maybe you're playing on a GW store, but at my place at my local game store we just let you choose whatever as long as it's clear which of your model is the leader it's fine um yeah first you'll pick this one if you're bringing bolt rifle if you're using pistols you can bring any other weapons i would suggest taking either power fist or power weapon thunder hammer looks good but it's four plus and it's only stun yeah you might look oh yeah but they, you can negate one attack but i usually prefer either power fist or power weapon yes power fists are four plus but on a crit you'll deal seven seven will insta kill guardsman if you're fighting against guardsman you might want to bring power fist if you are fighting against anything else you might want to bring power weapon because it's three plus and lethal five so there's like one third of a chance that you'll be dealing six damage instead of four all right that's for intercessors let's look at these the weakest unit in the game well i think they are so why do i not like their stats are same the same as intercessors however they only have heavy bolt pistol damage is fine but range six now here's why this is bad you only have five models. Now the balancing factor here usually when you only have five models is you can use Bolter Discipline and you have Overwatch. Now Bolter Discipline and Overwatch isn't very useful if you can't reach your enemy. That's a problem because remember this is an objective based game not just a game where you just kill each other. If the objective is like far away from you and you can't even Overwatch with your gun what's the point? That's why I don't like Assault Intercessors. They're like trash tier. All right, let's check the leader, but why bother? Because it's just the same crap. You can still bring Plasma Pistol, that's good. But again, range six. All right, Assault Intercessor, not very good. Let's uh, check the other one, which is Infiltrators. Now, Infiltrators, you have a longer range and a lethal five plus, which is actually very good you have less uh, wounds compared to assault intercessors and intercessors this is still pretty good 12 13 health is all right and they have good weapons now they have access to smoke grenades which is pretty good and helix gauntlet which you can use to uh, heal this could be useful these are marines right you have three apl so you might have one to spare to heal your friend the sergeant and the the warrior have pretty much the same stats, but the sergeant hits on 2+. plus. Let's look at the next one. Now, this is in, in cursor. The stats lines are the same. Uh, they have different weapon, same damage, but no cover. No cover here means they just don't gain the auto success they get from being in cover. And then there's the sergeant, pretty much the same. Their melee is a bit better with crit, 5 damage on crits, but still, um, you're, you'll usually better off shooting rather than fighting. Um, in cursors have the same one, smoke grenade. They can they have more a bit more battlefield control with haywire mine, which is pretty fine. Four or five damage to on two plus for attack dice. It can stun. All right. Sergeant, pretty much the same, only hits on 2+. Next one is the Reavers. Now, Reavers, same stat lines. Now, you have three choice, uh, two choices of range weapon. Reaver, Sergeant, same weapon choice, same melee choice, but they have the Bladesman. So, Reavers actually have both weapon choices. Like, they have Bolt Pistol and they have Bolt Carbine. And then you can pick whether you want to bring Bolt Pistol, Bolt Carbine, Combat Knife, which is, of course, why would you pick the any other? For the Sergeant, of course, you'll bring one Bolt Pistol, one bolt carbine and combat knife 
Why would you bring fist? Why would you bring just one pistol and combat knife? That's stupid. For the warriors, carbine, of course. You'll be using both carbine all the time. All right, the next one, heavy intercessor. Now, a lot of people doesn't like this, and I think they're kind of weak because they have APL2. This is not a typo because in the FAQ, this is not fixed. Yes, they have 18 wounds, but they only have four peoples, and the safe are only three plus. The weapons, you can bring either of these three. They have better damage from the baseline bolters, right? It's usually three, four. This is four, five. The executor is fine, but it's heavy, so I don't really suggest this i would suggest this one heavy bolt rifle because you can still move and shoot now you might say yeah just bring executor bolt rifle and give them suspenser but i think the suspenser would be better for the heavy gunner let's look at the heavy gunner same stat 18 wounds 3 plus apl only 2 remember but all of their range weapons have heavy you will have to give them suspenser for the heavy gunner because you have suspenser of course you're going to bring executor why? Because, let's see here. Hellstorm, ceaseless, rerolling once, not really that useful. Fusillade, probably the worst effect in the game. This is garbage. Like, you would think, oh, that's cool, you can shoot other valid targets. Yeah, but you're distributing your dice, but they each still have three defense dice. Why would you do that? Maybe if you're fighting, like, guardsmen or orcs or whatever stuff that have five plus saves but if they have like three plus save two plus save four even four plus save like why just focus fire and kill one target instead of injuring two targets this one heavy bolter eh, it has piercing one but i think this is much more useful because with this one you are guaranteed ap1 and you have a better chance of dealing critical all right the sergeant pretty much the same only one more health whatever all right, we're not going to talk about the firstborns. That will be the next video. Now, let's check the ploy. For the ploy, it's pretty standard because if you look at this, Bolter Discipline, Shock Assault, these two will be in all of the other Space Marine lists, like Chaos Space Marines. Uh, Grey Knights will have this, which this is basically you pay one CP at the, at the first, at the beginning of the turning point. If you don't fight, you can shoot twice and this one if you don't shoot you can fight twice most of the time you'll be using this the the third one i think this is rarely used because when i whenever i play and whenever my friend play with uh with their space marine they rarely use this because remember you only have a limited number of cps each turn all right let's go for tactical ploys now for intercessors they can use this transhuman Physiology, 1 CP. If you're getting shot at 1 normal safe, you can turn into critical safe. This is actually pretty good. If you're fighting enemy with brutal, brutal means you can only uh, it can only be blocked with a critical. This could be useful if you're using any of the, of any of the shooty lists. Again, for assault intercessors, not very useful. Uh, why is this not very useful for assault intercessors? Because of the, of the latest FAQ. So when... Only in death does duty end means you're already incapacitated. If you are already incapacitated, means your enemy is still in engagement range with this particular space marine. Melee rules stated that if you are incapacitated, you cannot deal damage. So even if this space marine is still standing, and you can still roll your dice for fights against uh, that other your that enemy operative but you will not deal damage it's useless so don't use this for melee engaged space marine use this for the ones that died because of range attack use this activate them and then they can shoot uh, and they shall know no fear is uh, i don't think this is very useful this is situational if you have like enemies that can that uses uh stun weapons i think admac one of them this might be useful or if your uh, space marines are injured you can probably use this omni scramble is only useful for infiltrators because only infiltrators can use them this is actually pretty good if you want to make someone unable to move and then you can shoot at them or whatever multi-spectrum array only for incursors whenever you shoot enemies uh, operative are not obscured this is actually quite good if enemy is like uh they're on a, on a window and more than one inch away they are usually obscured you can still draw a line of sight but they uh, you can't see them because of the obscuring rule you can use this terror troop 
one CP for reavers. This is good if you're if the reavers are on the objective. Could be useful to make enemies not able to act because for other factions with only two APLs, this pretty much means that they can only move and then nope you can't do mission action because mission actions usually use one AP and this makes it two AP. And when contesting objective markers, enemy APLs are being con considered one less. This is pretty good for objective play. So overall from all of this, I think the one that will be used the most is probably this whenever <laughs> A marine dies because trust me a marine easily dies easily dies maybe if you if you're fighting like guardsmen you won't die as fast but against anything else they'll easily die if you don't play very carefully let's look at the equipments auxiliary grenade launcher for intercessors this is useful i would say if you decided to bring a plasma pistol with your intercessor leader you might want to give an aux auxiliary grenade launcher on your leader give them one auxiliary grenade launcher give them one crack grenade or frag grenade or whatever right you will get to use these grenades twice and it's not range six anymore which is good so if you bring this on your leader if your leader is within six inches of the enemy you can just shoot your plasma pistol if your leader is further away you can use your grenade launcher it's pretty good for intercessor this is why i say intercessors are all right because they have longer range and even if the leader uses pistols you can still give them this so they can shoot further for at least two turns next one helix gauntlet for healing with infiltrators maybe useful depends uh, smoke grenades for these this could be useful so you can move forward without getting shot at i shoot this on like a choke point and then you can move a bit forward or towards cover or whatever with this. Haywire Mine, I've already talked about this um, when we were talking about incursors. Pretty useful area denial. Put this on like a, an objective or a choke point or whatever. Shock grenades for reavers only. So this is basically the same as grenades, right? Six inch range, but the effect is kind of different. You roll d6 for each operative within two inch of that point. Subtract one from the result if they are not visible to this operative. Like if you're uh, throwing on a corner. On a four plus, subtract one APL. This could be useful, especially if you're fighting like non-marines, models with APL2. You essentially make them APL1. And this is reavers, which can make objective play even harder for the enemy. Right, frag grenades, pretty useful if you're fighting horde enemies. Preferably use it with this, so you can use this twice. Crack grenade, pretty useful if you're fighting more tougher enemies, because it's AP1, better damage. But you can't use this for overwatch so be careful if you have a better range weapon you might want to use that instead of this one purity seal if you really don't like any of the other <laughs> equipments you can bring this this is kind of useful like once per game you can use the reroll without paying the cp but only once suspenser Pretty useful for uh, if you're using the heavy intercessor or heavy gunner. Bring this one so they can still move and shoot. Uh, grapnel launcher. This is for climbing and blah blah blah. Might be useful if you're using reapers. Might help you get to the objective faster or get to vantage points faster. Graph shoot reaver only. Yeah, looking at this, I think reaver have like quite a lot of choices in equipments, so they might be able to do more shenanigans. Oh, okay pretty useful i would think if you want to get them to like a, a vantage point or off a vantage point or something to get to uh, objective faster but remember 2 ep but then again if you're not bringing any other weapon you can just give this to all five members so all five can gain more movement can cover more ground to get to the objective faster could be useful and the last one is the auspex check one marine three inch of view and visible until the end of the turn that particular space marine counts as having no cover special rule remember no cover does not mean you can see concealed enemy behind cover this just means they gain no auto success from cover for 3 ep and 2 ap i don't really think this is worth it all right so out of all of this what do i suggest if you want to play intercessors are all right assault avoid at all cost in cursors they're all right and then there's the reavers i mean infiltrators it's this is all right because they have good weapon they have good uh, range weapon 
Lethal 5. It's pretty good. But their equipment choices isn't really the best. So I don't know. And then there's Reavers. So if you ask me, the two list I would suggest is for you to bring either Intercessors or Reavers. Heavy Intercessors, eh, I really don't like them because only ho you only have four members like out of all of these the uh, assault intercessors are the worst heavy intercessors are like the second worst so just bring intercessors reverse it's incursors and infiltrators maybe if you like them now what about rosters i am not going to really talk much about rosters because that's your decision uh you have 20 spots uh just bring maybe if you were only playing primaris right like you're a new player you only have primaris models uh, bring intercessors that's definitely bring them five people five reavers and maybe five incursors five infiltrators let's move on to the next section this is this is the last section which is uh the purchases for new players so if you have never played any warhammer before you don't have any models before kill team i would say is the perfect game to jump in because you only need to buy like one or two boxes most uh, for place marines you'll only use like one box this one unit box and that's pretty cheap it depends on which one you like you can just buy their box if you like intercessors buy a box of intercessors um one box of intercessors have like 10 models you can maybe split this with a friend the reaver is actually pretty good uh, you get nine reavers with a sergeant or you get uh, two five-man squad wait what about the primaries um primaris intercessors you get 10 models can you make it two five man oh you can yeah just split this with someone else it's all good uh, as for the as for the incursors uh incursors here we go incursors i think you can also do the same thing but for incursors uh, you can build them as infiltrators or incursors, so you might want to make uh, one of each, right? If you want, you can make one of each. You don't have to uh, split this with someone else. Or if you want, you can still split it, because you can make two sergeants, which is good. Good deal for all those. All right, I think that's it. Um, if you're a new player, that's my suggestion. Buy one box of this, you get two one one box of reavers you get two uh two squads or just buy um incursor box if you really want to like to get more bang for your buck buy a one box of incursors and then build five incursors and five infiltrators and you get two choices of units with one box pretty good right intercessor if you have a friend that want to share uh, reavers same that's it for my overview for the Primaris teams of the Space, uh, Space Marine Kill teams. In the next video, I will talk about the Firstborns. Uh, my favorite would be the Death Watch. I'm, I'm currently ordering the one box of the Death Watch, uh, Death Watch Kill team, which is pretty good. Pretty good options. Although you have to buy more bits for the plasma guns. But whatever, that's for next time. Uh, yeah, that was Space Marines for Kill Team 21. A very fun game, I think. It's not as simple as like uh, Warcry. You, there's more tactics involved. There's more rules involved. But I really like this game. Even though uh, some people hated the, the stupid symbols in the beginning. But I think after you play one or two games, you'll get used to it. This is very easy. Yes, it's not very intuitive. Because like, look at this. A square is three inches. What? You would think a square is four inches. Or whatever or, or two inches and a triangle is three inches and the circle is one inch but instead it's two but whatever after you play one game you'll get used to this so it's fine all right then that was my video on kill team space marine thank you for watching leave a like if you like this video um, leave a comment if you think i ramble on too much or i need to edit this video more to make it more concise or whatever thank you very much for listening and see you all next time bye